To Hong Kong now, where protesters are once again gathering to voice their fury at a highly controversial bill that would allow extraditions to mainland China. Critics fear it could be abused, making people more vulnerable to being prosecuted for political crimes. These are some of the scenes today. They follow the incredible protests on Sunday. One of the city's biggest trade unions is now calling for a strike Wednesday. But Hong Kong's chief executive is standing firm, saying the city must not become a haven for fugitives. CNN's Matt Rivers is live in Hong Kong for us tonight. Matt, nice to speak to you. What have you seen today? You've been in amongst the protesters. What have you been hearing from them? And what kind of events have you been witnessing? Yeah, Bianca, at its peak tonight uh, here outside of the Legislative Council building, which is the chief government building uh, here in Hong Kong, I think at its peak with the protesters here tonight, we saw several thousand as the hours have gone on. Uh, it's now a little bit after 2 a.m. here in Hong Kong. You know, people have started to trickle out a little bit, but you can see, I mean, there's still, this is a public road normally, but it's been closed off for now. You can still see there's a lot of people here, mainly young people. Things have been very calm uh, for most of the night, but you can see they're sitting on a median here uh, on this road, uh, really all the way down. And then if you follow me over this way, um, you can see this would be the, the complex here to the legislative uh, council building. And you can see that it's still being blocked off by uh, police in riot gear. They've been surrounding the entire complex here uh, for most of the night, uh, just to avoid any protesters going inside, which has happened in the past. So uh, despite the fact that, you know, there's a lot of riot gear here and whatnot, it might look very intimidating, things have been calm here uh, tonight. There was some thought that maybe there would be some violence after what we saw late on Sunday night after a very peaceful march all day Sunday, but that hasn't materialized. This has been very peaceful tonight. And so now we kind of move forward into what's going to happen about eight hours from now. Uh, and that's when legislators, lawmakers will go inside that building and they will start debating uh, for uh, the set on the second reading uh, this extradition bill that would see suspects here in Kong, Hong Kong be allowed to be extradited to mainland China. And that's what people here are very, very upset about. We expect the number of protesters, Bianca, to swell dramatically uh, once the sun comes up, not only because they are more organized, but also because we're told the city's largest trade union is encouraging workers to take the day off. Uh, and there is more buy-in in these kind of protests from the business community. So we are expecting a lot of people to leave work tomorrow to come join these protests. Uh, and that's what we're going to be looking forward on, on uh, 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 Wednesday when these lawmakers start uh, debating this very controversial bill. Matt, thank you. We know you'll be monitoring that for us. Matt Rivers in Hong Kong. Sunday's protests are said to be the largest in Hong Kong since the handover from Britain to China back in 1997. Chris Patton was Britain's final governor of Hong Kong and was a vital part of that transition. You can see him here at the handover, a hugely significant moment. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. As British administration ends, we are, I believe, entitled to say that our own nation's contribution here was to provide the scaffolding that enabled the people of Hong Kong to ascend. The rule of law, clean and light-handed government, the values of a free society, the beginnings of representative government and democratic accountability. Well, I spoke to Chris Patton about the protests that we're seeing today and this controversial extradition bill which would allow extraditions to mainland China, a move which he believes threatens those very values that he said he celebrated in 1997. What this move does is to remove the sort of firewall uh, between uh, the rule of law in Hong Kong, which guarantees Hong Kong's way of life, and the notion of law in mainland China, in which there's no real difference uh, between the security services and the courts, between party rules and the courts, in which people make uh, show confessions on television, in which human rights lawyers uh, are locked up for trying to represent their clients. And it's lamentable, and it will damage Hong Kong, not least as an international trade hub. That's why so many businesses and chambers of commerce uh, have denounced the move, just as lawyers have done and just as the public have done in those hundreds of thousands we saw in the television shots on Sunday. And you mentioned that 
this promise had been made to Hong Kong to respect all of those things back in 1997. Does this move actually come as a surprise happening now? Or have there been clues over the last couple of years which have made you concerned about this erosion of liberties in Hong Kong? I think we've all been rather surprised and worried over the last few years because, to be honest, for ten a dozen years after 1997, things went pretty well, not as perfectly as I would have liked. I didn't like the fact that democratic development was choked back despite the promises that China had made. But I think ever since President Xi Jinping came in and began rolling back Deng Xiaoping's reforms, began a crackdown on any sort of disagreement, uh, made the party in control of everything, um, and uh, uh, incarcerated hundreds of thousands of people in Xinjiang, was much tougher in Tibet. I think that's also been shown uh, by a toughening of the line on Hong Kong. And anybody who thinks that we should be able to trust uh, China in the future should consider how China is behaving in Hong Kong, because it uh, makes a mockery of China's promises that it will always go but play by the rules. So what can other nations do? Can, can they do anything to intervene and r remind China of the promises that were made to Hong Kong? It's very important that they speak out, as more and more of them have been doing. Um, it's very important that the British government leads the way on that. We have a sense of obligation. We should have a sense of honour about doing that. But it's also very important that governments, as they have been doing, point out that it's going to damage Hong Kong if it just seems to be treated like any other Chinese mainland city. Um, Hong Kong has been a great international hub. Uh, people are prepared to, be to behave towards it as an economic unity, um, as though it's different from the rest of China. But as Congress in the United States has been suggesting, if Hong Kong just looks like the rest of China, the danger is it gets sucked into the trade wars between China and others. We don't want to see that. It would be bad and damaging for Hong Kong. And it's extraordinary that the, um, the government in Hong Kong, I don't think they call the shots, frankly. I think they just do what uh, the Chinese communist regime tells them to do. But it's very, very sad they're not prepared to stand up for Hong Kong business, as well as for the ordinary citizens of Hong Kong who showed in their hundreds of thousands what they think about this. Is it possible at this late stage for the extradition bill to be shelved? What, if anything, would make China turn around? Well, it's possible if China cares a toss for what people in Hong Kong think, uh, and that's a, a real question mark. Uh, there are plenty of ways in which the government could now react. They could say, well, they're prepared uh, to look at uh, uh, different ways of dealing with what they claim is a loophole uh, in the law. It involved a murder case uh, in, in Taiwan. There are plenty of ways in which they could look at the proposals which lawyers themselves, which the Bar Association have put forward for dealing with that issue. If they did that, it would give them a time to consult the public more. It would give them time to uh, back off, um, le le perhaps without losing too much face, which, of course, they're very concerned about. But at the moment, what we're seeing is a really uh, important uh, and uh, unattractive assault on the basic freedoms of Hong Kong.